present to us, we pray, Lord Jesus. Speak to us through what we've heard today. That your words might bear fruit in our lives. Help us not only to hear, but also to respond to what you call us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In 1937, a man named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a pastor and theologian in Germany, wrote one of the most uh, important and powerful books, Christian books, in the 20th century. He originally titled it simply Discipleship, but it later became known as the cost of discipleship. Bonhoeffer was one of the folks that spoke out against the rise of the Nazi government in Germany. He was in prison and later executed because of his opposition to Adolf Hitler and to the Nazi regime. In that book, he defined the difference between what he called cheap discipleship and costly discipleship. Cheap discipleship, he said, was baptism without discipline. It was forgiveness and confession without repentance. Cheap discipleship didn't require much in terms of response or accountability or investment. On the other hand, the cost of true discipleship, he said, was an investment of ourselves. It's a response to the gospel, which is always the good news given to us freely by Christ. And it means assuming the yoke that Jesus talked about when he said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, because of grace. But there still is something required of us if we're going to take seriously the call to discipleship. There is a cost of following Jesus Christ. And in this morning's gospel, Jesus talks about that. He's at the height of his ministry at this point in terms of popularity. Not only are crowds gathering when he comes to a town to preach and teach and heal, but now they're following him from place to place. So he has his own groupies that are traveling with him as he goes from one town to the next. Large crowds we are told in this gospel. This gospel is part of a series of teachings that Jesus is doing. The challenge. Remember a few weeks ago he said, I have not come to bring peace, but division. Last week we heard him say, when you give a party, don't invite your friends and neighbors and the rich and the comfortable. Invite the poor, the sick, those that are in need. And now in this morning's gospel he says, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. It's at this point that the crowds begin to vaporize <laughs> and more people begin to fall away because Jesus is now talking about the next step in what it means to follow him. Once they've heard the good news and they've received the message of the kingdom and they've, and they've experienced healing, now there's the response to that. And the response, Jesus says, is not an easy one. It will cause difficulties in life. The good news also has a consequence if we are to take it seriously and to follow Christ seriously in our lives. The first is that it will sometimes cause broken relationships. There are people who misunderstand, don't understand, or who are hostile towards Christianity. One often knew that in his life, and often we find it in our own. That the priorities, the ethics, the message, sometimes causes people to feel uncomfortable. And that can lead to broken relationships. There's a large part of my family that simply does not understand who I am or what I do. They don't have a place for that in their experience. And so, we have very little to talk about, unfortunately. But there's also a 
a reordering of our priorities. What is the most important for us, particularly in terms of the culture that teaches us to always think of ourselves first? I'm number one. What makes me comfortable, what makes me happy, that's the most important thing. And to, that, to those folks, Jesus says, whoever hates his own life, but is my disciple. Who does not carry, whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We all have crosses to bear in life. Sometimes they're physical ones, emotional ones. Sometimes they're broken relationships. There are many different ways in which that happens for us. But all of them become opportunities for God to work and move in our lives. One of the interesting things about the first lesson we read this morning was the example of the potter and the clay. There's a difference between the sculptor and the potter and how they work. Sculptors use tools to shape and form clay. They cut away different pieces and parts. They use tools to, to bring out the image that they want. A potter only has really one tool, and that's pressure. They use a wheel, and they put pressure on the inside or the outside of the vessel in order to shape it into what they want it to be. I think that example is used very specifically. Because quite often, God uses pressure in our lives to shape us and to form us. And it's not a comfortable thing. It's not easy when that happens. But it's that pressure that helps us shape us into the people that God calls us to be. It'd be easy to try and avoid that. To live life in a comfortable way. Jesus calls us once again, as he did last week, and then we've passed to live an uncomfortable life because it's how we follow him. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Because the old hymn, if you don't bear the cross, then you can't bring the crown. One comes in association with the next one. Growth is often a process, therefore, of death and resurrection. It's a process of letting go. Letting something fade away, giving it to God, enduring that cross, that we might find something new and better, a fresh new life. And then, if that's not enough, at the end of our gospel this morning, Jesus says, None of you can become my disciple if you do not give up your possessions. Well, that's not an easy thing. I love my stuff. It makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel happy. I've learned to live with those things. I've often had to save for them. And now Jesus is saying, I need to let all that go. For some, this has been a literal giving up of possessions. For Francis, Dominic, Claire, for monastics, ages past. Following Jesus has been letting go of all those things and selling them, living in poverty. But, I think there's something else going on here. It is a matter of what is important to us, what captivates our attention and our energy, where our priorities are. Letting go of those things is a recognition that I am a steward and not an owner. And in fact, that all things come from God, and eventually all things will return to God. And so therefore, they're not really my possessions in the first place. The question is, what do I do with those things? How do I respond to the gospel? Because that's what our lessons are all about, all about this morning. How willing am I to lay down my life for that gospel? To invest in it, to pay the cost of discipleship. Those aren't easy questions to answer, because it's not easy to follow Christ. But it's interesting to me that at the height of his popularity, when all of these people were following him, then he begins to turn a new page and to, and to teach them about what it really means to follow Christ. Not just conveniently, not just what it makes them feel good, but this true discipleship. And I think that ultimately, that's the only way we grow 
growth spiritually. It's by following when it's easy and when it's not. When it is a happy experience, a joyous, joyous, and when something is asked of us, required of us, it's difficult. <coughs> because it's in those difficult times when I'm asked to turn away from the priorities of the world, of the world. when I'm asked to give of myself, to give up and surrender to God. It's at those times that we actually grow the most. Well, Jesus' words, once again, are challenging for us this morning. I think they're also comforting. Because it means that in this process and in this journey, we're not alone. The grace of God is there for us. I cannot outgive God. Whatever I am called to let go of, I know that God will be there. Present, with His love, and with His grace. Jesus calls us to count the cost of discipleship. To take that seriously. And challenges us to pay that cost as well. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you have called us to follow you. Allow us, we pray, not to fall into the complacency of easy or cheap discipleship, but to recognize that following you is a commitment of our whole lives, heart, soul, all that we are. And in that we pray, Lord God, you would strengthen us as your children in this world, as your followers, as your light, in Jesus' name.